Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end, oops, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas. It is a gorgeous Saturday afternoon, January 21st, 2023. But guys, you know, I am going to be heading off to Mexico and Belize for five weeks, leaving in a few days, and I don't know what it's, uh, the internet and my schedule is going to look like. So what I'm doing is I'm going to preload some rants, uh, some chronicles of the collapse and publish them, you know, while I'm down there. So, uh, cause I know you guys just can't stand it, uh, going more than 24 hours without seeing the little dog. So, for this preloaded rant, we're going to go over to the mainstream media here. And Lord, I have got so much uh, loaded here. Um, okay. We're going to go over to Sub-Saharan Africa to look at a couple of stories. This one from AP, this short story, I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, and then we're going to go over to a larger story. All right, from AP, an AP report, climate change fueling conflict in Lake Chad Basin. So this is, I don't know if you can see this photo, this damn, uh, probably cannot see this photo of some sort of refugee camp with thousands and thousands of people mostly it looks to me like little kids uh, in some refugee camp and uh, okay I'm just gonna read the first sentence droughts flooding and a shrinking Lake Chad caused in part by climate change is fueling conflict and my in and migration in the region. Do you think so? And then it goes all the way and about 90% of the way through here. Uh, I was absolutely shocked. Uh, about 90% of the way through the article uh, that the basin is home to 42 million people, blah, blah, blah. The UN Environment Agency notes that Lake Chad has shrunk 90% in 60 years, which climate change with climate change is a significant contributor. Irrigation, the construction of dams, and population increase were also to blame. I do not believe it. Uh, and so, of course, my comment to the story, number one, that I was absolutely shocked to see the word population in here. Uh, so one thing, I, I want you guys to understand that picture I just showed you of those thousands and thousands of people, mostly children, crammed into that refugee camp has, read, read my lips here, has nothing to do with climate change. I'm going to sound like Book Hermit here. It has nothing to do with climate change. It has 100% to do with all of those people being born. Okay, if the population of Sub-Saharan Africa today was where it was when Lake Chad was 100% full, it would be 100% full. Okay, make no mistake about it why 90% of Lake Chad has disappeared in the past few years because there's 40 
two million people sucking water out of the lake, damming up uh, the rivers going into the lake, and uh, obviously the last 10% of the lake is going to disappear. And then I'm not exactly sure what those 42 million people, probably 62 million people, are going to do when they drink the last drop of their drinking water. I guess they're going to go Easter Island like those guys after they cut down the last tree. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but let's get a little more honest reporting. I want to thank... Uh, alert uh, reader, uh, Kevin Shanholzer, my old lieut buddy, Lieutenant Kevin from fizz.org, and I'm going to put the uh, link to this article for anybody not understanding this. Deforestation imperils famed DR Congo Reserve as refugees flood in. Okay, we got to make one little change in the headline. Just like climate change is not causing the refugee crisis in the Lake Chad basis. Deforestation is not what's imperiling Virunga National Park. It is humans. Humans imperil famed DR Congo Reserve as humans flood in. <clears throat> Acrid smoke swirls amid the buzzing of dozens of chainsaws under the majestic Nyangongo volcano, producing scenes of devastation in the very heart of the lush natural treasure in eastern <clears throat> DR Congo. In less than two months, in the past two months, more than five, more than 200 hectares, more than 500 acres of forest have been raised to stumps in this corner of Virunga National Park where tens of thousands of Congolese who never should have been born have fled from clashes between rebels and the military. To survive, many have resorted to cutting down trees for firewood and charcoal, often paying a levy to militia groups for access to Africa's oldest national park, home to spectacular species of wildlife, including, you know, the most famous, the critically endangered mountain gorilla. If you remember that uh, movie, Gorillas in the Mist, and there's an excellent, excellent documentary you can find on Netflix called Virunga, about uh, what was going on in Virunga National Park about 10 years ago. But what is going on in Virunga National Park in the last two months? So in two months, th this is, you know, this is a national park. This is the, the last home of the critically endangered mountain gorilla. Uh, it was already cut in half. It used to be twice the size it is. They already cut it in half uh, once. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, and uh, now in the, so we're talking 250 acres per month getting uh, chainsawed to the ground. So uh, all of these people pouring in there can uh, get firewood and charcoal to feed their families. Okay, park official Mathode Uozi, quote, Since the arrival of the displaced, we have had deforestation in the volcano zone. It's extremely worrying. The new arrivals were forced from homes farther north by the advancing M23 militia. 
um, blah, 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 you know, just one of these many wars going on over there. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of the wars heating up in uh, Africa. So anyway, with all that as the backdrop, this guy, whoever his name is, uh, Fabrice. Uh, this is a 15-year-old only identified as Fabrice. Uh, Fabrice, the 15-year-old Fabrice, leaves each morning for the park to make charcoal, which he then sells with two brothers on the side of the road. Quote, it's to make a living, he told the French News Service. Uh, a woman who asked for her name not to be used, yeah, right, said people who cut down the trees had to pay taxes to militia, to militias. Uh, Another seller pointed to a Congolese soldier carrying a sack of charcoal. Look, even the soldiers here are making charcoal, she said. Higher up on the slopes of the volcano, soldiers and militiamen jointly organized the trafficking operation inside the park. Just a few months ago, the area was still under the authority of Virunga Park officials, but these days, rangers call the various rangers call the various militias first to alert them before venturing out. A bid to avoid harassment or worse. In December, two rangers were killed and another wounded by select suspected militiamen. Uh, said one, uh, said Mugisha, a young man making charcoal to help support his family, quote, FDLR fighters even sold plots of land you know, inside Virunga National Park, saying, this is the end of the park. Yep, yep, yep. So what did Bayo Kusengi Nibishi, another young man, lugging a load of wood on his back as he hiked down from the volcano? Quote, we know the problems of cutting down trees in the park, but we do it because we were born. We'd like to return home and not touch the park anymore. Obviously, that's not what he said. We do it because we're hungry. We know the problems of cutting down trees in the park, but we do it because we are hungry, said the young man who never should have been born lugging a load of wood on his back as he hiked back down from the volcano. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, meanwhile, tens of thousands of res refugees that have also fled to Rwanda. Uh, last week, Rwandan President Paul Kagame said his country would no longer accept people escaping the violence next door, further stoking tensions between the two countries. Okay. How many people think what's going on in Sub-Saharan Africa, which is going to mean 
the extinction of mountain gorillas and every other species of earthling that human Africans share Africa with. You do understand, guys, every single earthling that humans in Africa share the planet with will be extinct uh, probably by 2050, 2100 at the outside of that. How many people think the extinction of every species of African uh, is due to climate change? Raise your paw. Okay. How many people believe that ev the reason that every species of earthling that humans share Africa with are going to be extinct because of conflict? Is that the reason? Okay. How many people... Uh, or whatever you are, how many people believe that the reason that every single species of African that humans share the planet with will be obliterated off the face of the planet is because there are too many Africans. Raise your paw. You are obviously a racist, you are a eugenicist, you are a racist, you voted for Donald Trump, oh god, anyway let Brother Cardinal sing us back home, so uh, with that, uh, the little dog and I are going to get outside and enjoy this spectacularly gorgeous day in the great state of Texas while we still can. I mean, look at all the, you should see all the bush meat walking around out here on this beautiful day. Man, I'd like to put some of this bush meat in the stew pot. You need to get that bush meat right now. You go get that bush meat or not? Don't be harassing the bush meat. We're going to need that bush meat here in a couple more years. Get out there and enjoy your bush meat cooked over charcoal while you still can. Bye, guys.